merciful and compassionate Father. We confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health and mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health, protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In our first reading today, we will hear the story of Moses and the burning bush. I think that many people would have seen that burning bush, but they would have just passed by. They would have said, well, it's a plant on fire. What's special with that? But Moses saw the burning bush, gave it a second look, a longer look, and found something amazing. He saw that though it was burning, it was not getting consumed. And then he went closer to examine it. And that's when he heard the voice of God. As we begin this Mass, I'd like to give you a challenge. There are many amazing things that happen in the Mass, but things we just overlook. This Mass find a simple action, a gesture, or a word that strikes you. And then after the Mass, ask yourself, why did that strike me? Maybe as you examine it closer, 
you will hear the voice of God. For the grace now to see amazing things, let us now pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. For the many times that we just let amazing things pass us by, for the times when we prioritize lesser things over these great things we don't notice, let us pause now, say to the Lord we are sorry, and ask for his pardon and trust in his mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided that I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, Here I am. God said, Come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt, and I have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers. So I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, But when I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me, What is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who I am. Then he added, This is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses, Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus I am, am I to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. 
He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed to the sea, and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them, some of them did, and suffer death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Verse before the gospel, Repent, says the Lord, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard, and when he came in search of fruit on it but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but I have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it, and then it may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Similar to what Moses did, coming closer to the bush to examine it, let's also examine our Gospel today more closely. And hopefully, we will find the voice of God speaking to us. The people whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices, what's that all about? Biblical scholars are not entirely sure, but their guess is this. There were some people who were sacrificing some animals to God, but in the crowd among them were some soldiers who were dressed as civilians. And then these soldiers just ambushed the people who were sacrificing animals to God. They just did that suddenly. And so the blood of these people mixed with the blood of their sacrifices. A tragic death. 
And then we hear about the people on whom the Tower of Siloam fell. Again, a tragic death. But Jesus is very, very quick to say, don't think that they died because they were more sinful than you. You know, that's the first point that I'd like to make. Our God is not a punishing God. A tragic death is not punishment for sin. I think you already know this because I'm sure you know of somebody who is holy, perhaps somebody who is kinder than you, who died a tragic death. Surely that that tragic death is not a punishment for sin. So why did they die that way? That's a question for another reflection, for another time. And maybe only when we meet our God will we get an answer. But the point here that I'd like to make is our God is not a punishing God. But if so, why does Jesus say, if you do not repent, if you persist in your sin, you will all perish as they did? What's that supposed to mean? Think with me now. What if the as they did was not about the tragicness of their death? but about the suddenness of their death. The people who were sacrificing were ambushed. The people who were just walking by uh, that tower that fell, you know, probably didn't have, to didn't have time to prepare for their death. The as they did is about the suddenness of death. Death catching you unprepared. And then, the repenting there is basically turning to God and preparing for your death. So in the end, what we have is almost a tautology. If you do not prepare for your death, if you do not repent, then you will die unprepared. I'm going to make a dire prediction now. You may want to hold on to your seats. Or if you're attending this Mass with somebody whom you love, then maybe you want to hold his or her hand for support. My dire prediction. After this Mass, you will die. For some, it might take 20 years. For some, it might take 15 years. For some, it might take 10 years. But for some, it might take a month or a week. But for certain, sometime during this Mass, we will all die. And if we don't start preparing for our deaths, then we will die unprepared. If that is the message of our gospel today, prepare now because you don't know when death is coming, then think with me again. The parable that comes at the, low, uh, the latter half of our gospel today doesn't seem to fit. A parable that would fit this message, prepare now for this death that is inevitable, a parable that would fit there would be something about urgency, doing something now. But as we heard in the parable, the fig tree that bore no fruit was given one more year. And this wasn't the only chance that was given the fig tree because the owner of the fig tree had actually given it three years before that one year. This, I think, is a great image that our God is a God of second, third, fourth chances, and even more. But I think there's more here. More than just the mercy of God in giving us chance after chance after chance after chance, I think there is the wisdom of God that tells us repentance 
is not a one-time act. Repentance is not you, something that you do when you say, well, I received Jesus as my personal Savior, period, I repented. No. Repentance, preparing for your death, is a process. A process that hopefully you will start now. What is the first step that you will take in the process of preparing for your death? I asked that question to a group of women whom I study the Bible with some of their answers. I think I have to start letting go of some hurts that I have been carrying for the longest time. Maybe that's the first step in preparing for death. Somebody said, maybe I think I have to finally say sorry to somebody I hurt long ago. Maybe that's the first step in preparing for my death. What can be the first step in the process of preparing for your death? Let me give you one possible first step. There is an old French proverb which in English goes, The dead go to their graves, clutched in their hands, only... What do you think? Mas maganda po sa Filipino. And for this Filipino translation, I'd like to give credit to Dr. Onofre Pagsanghan. Sabi po niya, ang mga namatay, tumutungo sa kanilang hukay, tangan-tangan lang sa kanilang mga kamay, ang kanilang, ano po kaya? The answer, the dead go to their graves, clutched in their hands, not their bank accounts, not their clothes, not their cars, the dead go to their graves, clutched in their hands, only that which they have given away. Ang mga namatay, tumutungo sa kanilang hukay, tangan-tangan lang sa kanilang mga kamay, ang kanilang ipinamigay. And that is true because when we finally meet our Lord and our Maker, He will not ask us, how much did you earn while you were still alive? He will not ask us, how many countries were you able to visit? What was your highest position? No, our Lord and our Maker will only ask, when I was hungry, did you give me something to eat? When I was thirsty, did you give me something to drink? And people will remember us by the kindness that we give to them. Ang mga namatay, tumutungo sa kanilang hukay, tangan-tangan lang sa kanilang mga kamay ang kanilang ipinamigay. One of the saddest sights you will see is when somebody dies and you open his or her closet and you find clothes never used. Boxes of gadgets unopened. Things hoarded and now never to be used. Start the process of preparing for your death by giving, by letting go of the things of this world. If you do not start the process of preparing for your death, you will be unprepared. What is that first step you will take? We now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, who is patient and aware of our weaknesses and miseries, help us bear the good fruits of conversion and renewal. We pray, Lord of strength, hear your people. Lord of strength, hear your people. May the church always work for reforms within herself, aware that she is a community of people always in need of repentance, we pray. Lord of strength, hear your people. Instead of looking upon the miseries of others as punishment of God, may we open our hearts and hands to them, ready to share with them what we have, we pray. Lord of strength, hear your people. May the Holy Spirit stir in those who will be baptized the fruits of repentance, justice, and love, we pray. Lord of strength, hear your people. Protect our brothers and sisters of precarious and high-risk jobs, our frontliners, those who work for peace and order, and all those we love and care for, we pray. Lord of strength, hear your people. For those celebrating their birthdays, Teresita Perez, Enzo Pasis, Fatima Zen Barosa, Rosho and Roman Tabayoyong, Ira Lagunzad, Tito Chan, Toto Chan, and Grace D, we pray. Lord of strength, Hear your people. For the healing of Nino Mercado, Donnie Salvador, Concepcion Jimenez, and Emily Quaso, we pray. Lord of strength, hear your people. For the repose of the souls of Arnel Abgelina, Araceli Santos, Abigail Yu, Alfredo and Rizalinda Caparas, TJ Vega, Ferdinand Bolaso, Alan Matutina, and Elisa Ocampo, we pray. Lord of strength, hear your people. For the special intentions of June and Eva Caparas, Corette del Pilar, Joji Puno, Susilu, Lisi, and Cecil, Maricar and Marijo, Lisa Halandoni, Hannah Gonzalez, Welvi Cadigoy, Marge Matutina, Nelia and Butch Nazareno, we pray. Lord of strength, hear your people. And for all the intentions sent to our Facebook pages at Jescom and Radio Katipunan, we pray. Lord of strength, hear your people. Father, hear our prayer. Give us strength to be faithful to our Lenten observance of more intense prayer and more willing service to our brothers and sisters. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from the disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Onesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Behold Jesus, the God of second, third, fourth, fifth chances. Blessed are those who take those chances. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. You may not be able to receive the body and blood of Christ sacramentally, but now I ask you to receive Jesus into your heart spiritually as you say this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we end, a surprise quiz. Fill in the blanks. Ang mga namatay. Tumutungo sa kanilang hukay. Tangan-tangan lang sa kanilang mga kamay. Ang kanilang ipinamigay. That's one step that I would like to suggest to all of us to start the process of preparing for our deaths, to start letting go of the things of this world so that what we have will enrich others. What other steps can you take? And that is your homework. Try to answer that question. How can I start the process of preparing for my inevitable death? And then, start the process. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness, grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has been offered. Let us now go and start the process of letting go. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Oh